Welcome to the Introduction to Geographic Information Systems and Science lecture series developed by the Quinney College of Natural Resources at Utah State University. Discussion topics for this lecture include the importance of spatial thinking, spatial patterns, geospatial data models, and spatial data types. So all of these different types of GIS data are represented through GIS data models. Now GIS data models uh, come in two types, generally speaking. We have what we call vector data, or points, lines, and polygons, and we have raster data. And you've all seen raster data before. If you use Google Earth or if you've taken a, even a picture with your digital camera, you've seen a raster data set. Data models uh, can represent houses, they can represent transportation networks, parcels, uh, building footprints. That can be a vector data set. Um, raster data sets can represent elevation, sometimes they can represent just an aerial photo. Perhaps they can represent population density per square mile, as an example in the, in the slide here. Now, to discuss specifics about these data models, vector data models are discrete representations of geospatial features, models as coordinate pairs of XY points connected by lines. So vector data really consists of points, lines, or polygons. Those are the three types of vector data that are available in a GIS. And those vector data types are described by attributes. So we talked about attributes a second ago. We'll talk more about them in just a minute. Vector data within the ArcGIS, the Esri ArcGIS format, uh, is referred to as oftentimes feature classes, which are also point lines or polygons. And these feature classes may be stored in a geodatabase, a shapefile, or historically what we would call a coverage. But we don't use coverages all that often anymore. Points in the vector data format do not have a length or a width. They also do not have a depth, and they're considered to have zero dimensionality. They just have an XY location in space. So you can see there in the slide, each one of those points has some XY value in space, but they have no dimensionality. Lines, on the other hand, are sometimes called arcs or vectors. They have length, but they, they generally don't have a width or a depth. So we're left to consider them as one dimensional. So really a line is a series of XY points that's connected by a series of vectors. Area on the other hand have both length and width but they do not have depth and they're considered two dimensional. So really we're building up on the complexity of a point here. We look at a, a line feature class as being a number of points connected by a line or an arc. Well a polygon is the same idea, however the first and the last point are connected or completed by closing of an arc. So you have a full area that you can calculate uh, within uh, the closed confines of those arcs. Lastly, we can consider a volume. Now, and we won't use volume too often in this lecture series. However, volume elements have a length, a width, and a depth. So you can consider them multidimensional, and you can actually calculate the volume within the object. This is very important for geomorphic studies, or glacier studies, or even water hydrology studies. Some advantages to vector data are that they have very precise locations of features. So it's either on the line or off the line. There's not really any fuzzy tolerance between being on or off the line. You can capture and store many related attributes. As an example, our fire hydrant had many related attributes about the one single XY location. Vector data formats are very flexible and easy to update and edit. And you can also store them quite easily, and you can store large amounts of data within a vector data set. Lastly, vector data is well suited for analysis of areas, lengths, and networks, which we'll talk more about in future lectures. Raster data models are very powerful, and you've all seen these if you've looked at Google Earth or looked at maps on your phone. But raster data sets represent geospatial features or phenomena through a series of grid cells or pixels. Each pixel represents a spatial location on the surface of the Earth. So it's, it's some kind of an average of a spatial location has some value tied to a single pixel uh, concerning some information about the surface of the Earth. The raster details, uh, each raster has an XY location. Raster data sets are represented by rows and columns, and they're generally georeferenced to the surface of the Earth. So every single pixel represents some portion of the Earth's surface. 
two different raster types that exist are continuous raster data sets and discrete raster data sets. Continuous raster data sets are a raster in which cell values vary continuously across the surface of the Earth. There's no clear boundary that exists from one pixel to another. An example of this can be elevation. However, discrete rasters are a raster that typically represents phenomena that have clear and concise cut boundaries with attributes that are descriptions, classes, or categories. Now, when I say clear and concise, don't confuse this with the vector data set that has a very discrete boundary. However, raster data set or discrete raster data sets such as this land cover analysis that you can see on the screen actually have a clear boundary saying this is one type of land cover and if we move to the next cell it could represent another type of land cover.